Robert would, uh, my dad would say, Robbie, go get the Falcon, quick! And this is the best dog podcast. Some say these two trainers were quietly in the shadows. Robert Weatherwax, last of the legendary Lassie trainers from the world's greatest movie dog training family, was quietly hidden in his TV work. And Christoph Klugston elite action K9 trainer was traveling from the sub-zero arctic to the sweltering jungle heat training dogs on three continents. But a chance meeting changed all of that. Now, Robert and Christoph have joined forces and they're breaking the silence. For the first time, the secretive and hidden world of the movie dog trainer and the science of the elite tactical trainer will be revealed. That's right, they are out of the shadows. Welcome to Tactical Practical. In this episode, we're going to talk about something very controversial. So, hey, let's tackle it. Let's get controversial. Let's, here's the theme for this time around. And it is, should an angry person own or get a dog? Should an angry person get a dog? And there's a lot we can say about that. And that's exactly why we're doing it. It's like people, what do you mean by angry? What type of anger? Exactly. Because some people are going to say, hey, you know, angry dogs, emotional support dogs. Angry people get emotional support dogs. That's one thing. One aspect, should they have them by themselves? We can talk about that further. Should an, a person who gets angry road rage, should they have a dog? Should they drive around with their dog with them? Is the dog going to calm them down or are they going to take it out on their dog? Are they going to displace their anger on the dog? All of these things are vitally important. Is it more dangerous to the dog to be with an owner who is, gets angry and, and frustrated all the time because generally anger stems from frustration this is one of the things we have to talk about i'm going to delve into it right away and that is yeah what do i think well again it depends on what type of anger we're talking about is it somebody who's just angry all the time a psychotic rage as it were that's a, a serial killer type of anger no they should not be around dogs they shouldn't be around dogs whatsoever but what about a person who gets frustrated about the bills are too high, the rent is too much, they can't get a break at their job, or they get fired, or things are happening that they don't like, you know, the car broke down, they have repairs to make on the house, all these sorts of things. These things will frustrate and create anger. Now, I know a, a lot of people that having a dog is a calming influence. Some people say they get a cat. And that this happens but other people say having a dog is a calming influence for them so in this case yeah i i can, I can tell you about people who when they, they've been angry and they've had a bad day at work or they had bad interactions with people at work and they come back home and there's their dog who's happy and energetic wants to see them and it changes their mood it changes the mood it, it gets the person out of the anger gets them to forget about the frustration, changes their emotional state completely better than using psychotropics. And this is something there is research done on this a dog being around a dog calms people down, lowers their heart rate, drops their blood pressure. This is something that's very beneficial about being around a canine. The dog can actually help the person changed their state this is one of the things so in this case yeah an angry person you know angry is such a such a subjective term and people want to throw it around you got to really define what you mean by angry and what type of anger is it what sort of anger does the person have what sort of anger are they demonstrating and like i'm saying if the person is somebody who just getting frustrated by today's conditions the economic situation their job situation or maybe they're having relationship problems with whomever it could be their wife their husband girlfriend boyfriend maybe their kids whatever a lot of people say I've known people who who are married for many many years and what do they do they go out with their dogs hunting or something these dogs calm them down these dogs give them a sense of a purpose a direction where they feel that they're in control again because a lot of people get angry when they feel like they're not in control of the situation when things get way out of hand for them whether that be hey, I can't I can't afford the house repairs. I can't afford the car repairs. I, I, can't, I can't deal with the economic situation that's going on right now in the country. 
I, I can't deal with this and this, and then having this uh, sort of a safe haven again, having a dog that you can count on because the dog doesn't care about your uh, your poverty. <laughs> your dog doesn't care about wh what sort of car you drive. The car doesn't, the, you know, the car doesn't matter to the dog. The dog doesn't care about the clothes you wear, doesn't care about your status, doesn't care about uh, you're trying to socially climb, or any of that thing. The dog cares about you uh, as a person, as, a, as another animal. And that's it. And that's a very honest relationship that you're not going to get with many people and so this in a lot of respects is a calming and again with and i i don't uh, i'm not a proponent of this sort of thing but there are people who work with kids who have childhood schizophrenia or autism and they use dogs as part of therapy dog therapy for the kids the kids start to relate to the dog and, and what that they can with the dog and the dog gives them a, another part of a stable environment and so these kids one of the things that you'll see with uh, childhood schizophrenia or with autism they get violent the kids get violent very quickly frustrated frustration leads to violence to some more psychology for people and they'll take it out on the walls on themselves and the dog becomes a calming influence for these kids that's not what i do or i and i'm not suggesting that i'm just saying that that's what happens some people do do that there is this type of therapy so we got to look at all these aspects and maybe you people out there have an instance where you've been frustrated you've been angry about a situation but then you see that dog <laughs> you come over to that dog or dogs and they're being weird you know they're giving you that strange face they're happy to see you they're bouncing up and down and then suddenly you know it's not the end of the world anymore you you have this you have this new uh I want to say lease on life, but you have this new found uh, respect for the situation because the dogs have changed your uh, mental and emotional state. So this is one of the things. So when we talk about anger and, and an angry person having a dog, we have to be really uh, specific about what we're talking about. And so now I've covered quite a bit of, of different categories and reasons why, yeah, yeah, an angry person depends, of course, on the spectrum. Uh, it's just like, you know, can a can a heavy person get in an elevator? You know, an overweight person. Well, how overweight are we talking about? <laughs> because there's a load limit for for an elevator. You know, are, are they are they 200 pounds? Okay, you can get an elevator, which is big in Southeast Asia. Now, you know, are they 250, 300. Well, they get above 300. I don't think that you're gonna start watching it because the elevator has a load limit. You're 400 pound. I'm not getting an elevator with them. You know, so you got to look at the situation completely with all the context and stuff. Stuff. So anyway, that's that's part of what I have to say, Robert. What do you, what do you have to say about people who who have this frustration, frustrating lives, and 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 get uh, you know the the anger stems from these emotions, and the and they would you suggest they get a dog, or what would you tell them? Well, I mean, I think I probably mentioned that in my book about the whole uh, lifestyle thing about people having. Uh, lifestyles that aren't conducive to owning dogs. Um, obviously, perfect example, somebody who works all the time, comes home stressed out, takes it out on his dog. Dog hasn't seen you all day. So they're thinking, well, what did I do wrong? I haven't even been here with you all day. And, and you're mad. They don't know why you're mad. They just know that you're mad. They assume it's about them. Um, and, and that gets everything off to a bad footing, especially if you're doing training where it's based on trust. And you can't have trust if you don't know if your partner is going to fly off the handle and just lose it, you know, over something we're not even aware of. Because I think we give dogs a lot of credit for reasoning because they don't really reason the way we do. They don't say, oh, maybe you had a hard day. Uh, maybe traffic was bad. Um, you know, we don't, you know, it, this stuff happens to all of us. I mean, I, I hear people talking about it all the time. Oh, my God, it's the worst traffic ever. And, you know, they've been driving those roads for years and years. And suddenly today it's worse than ever, right? Uh, because it's not just that. It's a lot of other things. It, it's like, a, you know, the, the, the barrel of monkeys, you know, you just keep stringing them down. They keep hanging higher, longer and longer. And before you know it, you're pulling, you're dragging the dog down. You're dragging everybody around you down. And it's not just about dog training. It's about harmony in the household. If you live alone, that's one thing if you want to yell at yourself all day. But the tension that you bring to everybody else in the household spreads to the dog through different directions. It starts coming not just from you, but from the people you've affected with your anger. So, and I know that, you know, in the years and years I've worked with, with uh, you know, been around trainers, and I've seen them lose their cool. Um, but it's very rare because, you know, but when you're working on a set for eight hours, 40 hours a week, uh, a starring role, you're going to have those moments. And 
if it's a moment, that's one thing. But if it's something you're doing as a pattern where you're, you're taking out your anger on everybody around you, don't get a dog. Yeah, it's not a good idea. I mean, don't have a kid either um, because uh, you're going to screw up your kids. You're going to screw up your dog. I just feel like, you know, it's like Elvis Presley, and I'm sure that nobody would ever enjoy him throwing, shooting out the TV or, or doing any of this stuff that we heard him doing because that messes with the dog, you know. Perfect example, my grandfather. He didn't really get angry at the dogs, but he had this habit of throwing things, right? He'd throw a glass if he got mad, or he, and he wouldn't think about it. He was older then. He was like 76. Um, and, you know, we, we were like, hey, Brad, you know, you don't really have to train the dogs anymore. I mean, you're, you're old. It's like, yeah, well, I want these dogs trained. And he always thought there was going to be another lassie, right? Another one, even up to the very day he died. So, um, you know, the dog that he trained during that period of time where he was throwing the, the glasses, the dog became afraid of anything that was thrown. So when my dad inherited that dog and him and I worked on the new Lassie together, the dog was afraid of anything that flew. So if somebody threw a Frisbee or a ball, the dog was like, I'm out of here, back to the car, let's go home. And we had to bring another dog on set, uh, Maltese, uh, named Falcon, we called him the Maltese Falcon, right? Um, and, and he came out of the car when, when the dog folded up. When Lassie folded up, here comes the falcon. Robert would, uh, my dad would say, Robbie, go get the falcon, quick. So I'd, I'd run, get, get the falcon out of the car, and I'd be hiding him under my arms, and I'd get behind my dad, and, just, and we'd get the dog set in front of the cameras, and then I'd peek up over my dad's shoulder with the dog. Here he is. Here's the falcon. And, and then, of course, his ears perked up, and he was like, yeah, that's my buddy over there. So he forgot about all the stuff that was going on, the things that, and, you know, anger is like anything. You know, somebody else might end up getting that dog after you've yelled at it and, and got frustrated with it and got rid of it, and now they're going to inherit the problems that you created. That's just not fair to the dog. It's not a fair to the, to the owner who gets the dog after you. Um, so just be aware of the long-term ramifications of being angry around your dog. I mean, I've been angry, like, as your girlfriend, for example. I keep going back on the girlfriend thing because I don't have one, right? <laughs> but, but if you have a girlfriend, send, right? Send in your, send in your requests. Send in your requests. <laughs> no, you don't, you send, you, your girlfriend's not going to hang out with you if you keep getting pissed off all the time. Um, and, you know, it's going to be, oh, no, i got to go out with him again. And then we're going to watch a movie, and he's not going to like the movie, and he's going to get upset, and he's going to yell at me on the car ride home. And, um, you know, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it to anybody around you. If you're angry, go outside, uh, go into a closet, and scream your head off. But don't do it around everybody else. <laughs> I'll let it back. Go back to you, Christoph. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that, uh <laughs> There's so many dynamics to this, you know, that's the whole point. That's why so many people are interested in this because they think about it in one one regard and here we're trying to give as many different regards. Like I talked about the play therapy for the kids and stuff. A lot of people don't even consider that. And you know, Robert's talking about more normal people. I'm talking about more psychotic people. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's maybe I've had been around more psychotic people than Robert has. But and I'm going to bring up something about. No, everybody I've been around is psychotic. That's the thing. So I don't really notice. <laughs> okay the, but the, here's the here's something i'm going to throw this in and this is something totally different and okay the pet dog people won't understand this they won't know this but as a tactical dog trainer look the, these are called high tempo high stress environment yelling and screaming is part of it if you don't think you're in a war situation with dogs that have to do jobs uh, for example nowadays bomb dog is the number one thing but before Patrol dogs, scout dogs, looking for the, you know, everybody's got to be quiet with the scout dog initially, but when contact is made, meaning that, that they start shooting, you start shooting at each other, and there's stuff going off, yelling and screaming going on and on, that is anger. <laughs> if you don't think that that's anger, so those dogs have to be acclimated to that, and I'm used to doing that. Like my dogs do not freak out when I scream and yell because I, I, have, I have accustomed them to that. Now, do I think that that's for everybody? No, but that's just part of my background, and I want them to be able to do that. And Robert will tell you, on movie sets, they've got to get dogs who just kind of like, eh, people are screaming and yelling. You can't have the super sensitive. That's why I can't use my I can't use my American Bulldog on, on a set. It had to be a completely closed set because he can't handle that. You know, he can do things, but he can't handle that sort of situation, that context. So these are that's what we're talking about here. What sort of you know what can you handle and where's where is the anger going now? There's a per perfect example. My American bulldog is very sensitive to me. If I look at him 
like I'm angry, it hurts him. I mean, it, it emotionally hurts that dog. So this is something like Robert's talking about. You know, you got to be careful of what you're doing. This again goes to we got a hundred years with, between the two of us, so we know how to read dogs and we know how how you can act with each dog. But the point is that you got to know what what we're talking what you're talking about here when you're saying anger. Are you talking about yeah, you know, flaring up? It seems like you know uh, Robert's pretty angry about not having a girlfriend. Send send your <laughs> <laughs> not not angry. <laughs> yeah, that's the sign. Denial. So the, the there's there it is. So send in your uh, your mm. requests and uh, we'll we'll see what we can do about that. Anyway, <laughs> the, the anyway. So the the point here though is with the with the ang- with the angry uh, dogs and see that dogs can be angry too. And you and you got to bring now. We can turn that around too because should it, a lot of people think okay hey you know my kids are angry it's okay for them to be now see i have a big thing i don't let kids around dogs i don't like it it just stops all the problems it stops any liability in the united states because everybody wants to blame you hey the little primate's supposed to have a big frontal cortex but you're blaming the canine right should be the other way around but what i'm saying here everybody thinks oh having an angry kid around a dog is okay it's not okay keep that angry kid away but Everybody wants to keep the angry dog away from everybody. And that's where it comes in. And this is kind of a different topic, really. But I just want to put a little bit in there. And this is something I'm, that we can talk about a little bit. I don't want to go down this deeply because then we kind of lose our thread, as it were. But an angry dog needs a calm person. And uh, Robert, you want to expand on that? I mean, because you... you see- yeah, you know, what you, what you were talking about makes a lot of sense. Because you're talking about insulating the dog. We're always trying to insulate, like you say, insulate the kids, insulate the, the wife, the husband, whatever, the, the children. Um, we got to insulate the dog from things that are negative. Um, if your child is having a tantrum, you walk over and you tell them, look, you know what? Once you go over here, let's go outside and you can cry out here. You know, we're not going to do this in front of the dog, right? I mean, it's the same thing as if you witnessed a murder. Like, you know, it's going to have an impact on you for the rest of your life. That's why soldiers go to war and they come back all messed up because of what they saw what they heard um so you got to really be careful about and especially if you're somebody who's and and i'm going to talk a little bit about voice you know i'm a pretty loud person uh christoph's pretty loud too our voices carry so with dogs get used to that they build up a tolerance to it um but if you're somebody who's pretty quiet and then all of a sudden you're yelling at the top of your lungs you know the dog's like hey he never does that you know mikey never ate that right um you, (laughs) you you need to you need to consider the source. It's like, hey, is this consistent with the way I normally act around my dog? Um, and even crying, you know, despair. You know, a lot of people are depressed. They cry for no reason. Um, it's like, okay, a little bit of crying, the dog comforts you. That's fine. But if it's something that's happening over and over and over again, you're going to make your dog sad, ultimately sad, like all the time, waiting for that next volcano to erupt. And um, I think you have to just think about what your dog is hearing, I mean, we do that all the time. You know, we edit all the stuff on TV so kids can't hear bad words or, or inappropriate words, whatever it is. We're, we're censoring our kids all the time. It's to a point, it, it, to an extreme, right? But with dogs, oh, they can handle it. They're fine. They'll be fine. But they're not going to be fine, you know, because, I mean, I still have, uh, you know, my parents took me to see Deliverance when I was a kid, right? And the whole squeal like a pig thing, it traumatized me. It traumatized me for for years, I never wanted to go to the movie theater again. Um, so, you know, be careful. You don't take your kids to R-rated movies when they're seven years old, okay? Don't take your dog to a, a people fight. Um, don't take them down to, you know, a UFC wrestling match where people are falling down, landing on other people. You know, you want to get your dog to look at the world as, as it is normally. There's going to be times when things will happen, they're out of the blue, and then your dog will react to them. That's fine. But I don't want it to be triggering a memory of something that they, that something bad that you did or somebody in your house did. Um, you have to be thinking about the long-term ramifications of what anger does to your dogs, to your kids, to your marriage. It, it, it's just, no, there's no place for it. No place for it, and especially with a dog who's more tuned in than anybody in your family, more tuned in to earthquakes, volcanoes, uh, sonic booms, miles and miles away. I mean, I remember 1971, uh, we had that big earthquake in Silmar. It was it was like 7.9 or something. Threw me out of my bed. I talked in my sleep 
for the rest of my my for my life i've talked in my sleep ever since that event and the dogs um they knew about it before it even started shaking they already knew the dogs are getting all upset they're barking and it's like and all of a sudden everything's going crazy and my parents will run to the 100 gallon fish tank save the fish tank right but um yeah i've been through a lot i've seen two earthquakes two major earthquakes in california um i've seen and i've seen people become earthquakes themselves uh you know my dad had a temper and you know we'd say the same thing to my dad that we would say to you hey you know why don't you go outside the dogs are here right the dogs are here um and but <laughs> uh, it's this it's life i understand people get upset think about who's around you when you get upset because uh I think it's important that um, you try to insulate the people that, that are going to be most affected by it and the dogs because yeah. they are people. I mean, if you don't consider your dogs people, then you shouldn't have a dog. Uh, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but yeah, but okay. Yeah, all, uh, yeah, all that is important stuff. Very, very important. That's what you're getting on this podcast. You're not getting anywhere else. We're talking about these deep psychological issues. And it seems like we're finding out that Robert has a problem with dates and that they were crying. <laughs> And that, oh, I right. needed to drop this subject now. I just threw that out there. That was just an analogy, okay? <laughs> okay. It's well, just an analogy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that'll, that'll be his catchphrase. It's just an analogy. The, uh, <laughs> the, but I want to get back to this. I want to get back to this point because I, I, I kind of went down it, and I figure we might as well do a little bit about it. Now, okay, Robert, what, you're going to see people because all the time because that's what you're doing. You're handling problems. People have dogs and they have some sort of problems and they want you to come in and, and cure those problems. And so you're probably dealing with this one and they're like, oh, my dog is angry. My dog is angry like at whatever, the postman or, 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 the, or the cousin Edna or whatever. Okay, so what do you do? What do you generally do? I mean, you don't have to give the, all, the whole big details or anything, but I, I think people would be interested that this is a common thing that all also too we can't just think about the person as you're saying it's about the dog so what do you do in that sort of it? what do you do in that instance? well a lot of times i mean when i'm working with people i'm working with the dog they're already accustomed to my voice because it's and it's loud so they'd have to be doing something pretty bad with their dog and it's not just voice sometimes it's your body language so i read the the owner and the dog and if i see them getting frustrated i'll say you know what lower your voice a little bit and just relax like do a reset this all doesn't have to happen right now um you know if you're too tense to move forward take a step back if the dog's too tense to move forward have the dog take a step back you know the dog isn't the only one who needs a recess um the owners need a recess too so they can meditate do whatever it is to get in that happy place right think about fiji and the beaches and you know think about something that puts you in a better place right i'm not a psychologist but I am a dog psychologist, and, and there's a lot of things that dogs have problems with, that kids have problems with, that people have problems with, um, and that is they all have a memory. Um, but with dogs, uh, it's much more intense. That, that initial memory is much more ingrained. It's like an imprint on a dog, whereas for us, it's an experience. For them, it's, a, it's reality, like all the time. Um, if you're yelling, and especially with young dogs, you know, you might have a 10-year-old dog that's heard everything, seen everything, he's half deaf, that's fine. You want to yell, you want to go crazy. But even then, I don't want you kicking walls, you know, and punching doors because they can feel that. Even if they're deaf and blind, they can feel the vibrations. Um, they know, you know, we're the same way as a kid. I think that's where I got a lot of my sensitivity because I was an only child. Um, I didn't really have any other kids to interact with. I interacted with the dog. And I spent a lot of times trying to figure out the dog's mood. Like, is he happy? Is he sad? And, and I realized that a lot of the happiness and sadness that the dogs had was based on the happiness or sadness in the household. This is not a pig or a chicken where they stay outside in the barn and, and, and they don't hear anything. Hearing that's 10 times as, more, as powerful as ours. And a lot of the times we get mad at our dogs for mistakes that we make that leads the dog to, be mis, to misunderstand what we're doing and does something based on something we did or something that we encourage. You know, you might think it's cute for a dog to, um, you know, beg and everything, but there's going to come a time you're not going to find it cute and then you're going to snap at your dog and there's no reason for that either just nip it in the bud don't let them do it in the first place or let them do it all the time um but you can't be back and forth uh yeah this is cute hey, get out of here what are you doing you know i just did that i'm i'm dog sitting and the dog that i'm training just got up and like are you okay are you okay yeah because they're worried about me they're worried like is he mad at me and then i'm petting him petting her right now and she's like oh 
he's not mad at me. Yeah. So you have to let him know. And if you are going to yell in front of your dogs, you have to go over to them and say, hey, I'm not mad at you. It's yeah, good. Yeah. Have a biscuit. Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to repair the damage. Sometimes you don't catch yourself in time and the damage happens. So go and fix the damage. Go do something special with the dog. Let them know that, hey, we're going to go for a walk. It had nothing to do with you. Okay? I'm mad at him or I'm mad at her. But I'm not mad at you, right? And you got to let them make that very clear because, you know, arguments, anger, they're all the same thing to a dog. They don't know what you're arguing about, who you're talking about. Um, as an only child, I always thought that if they were talking about anybody, they were talking about me because I had no brothers and sisters. There was nobody else to talk about. So I just assumed they had to be talking about me if they said him or, you know, he or I'm thinking, oh, no, they're talking about me. Um, but, you know, in a household of dogs, they could have been talking about the dogs, but they weren't talking about my siblings because they didn't have any. The, the dogs were my sibling. Think about that in a, in a more uh, psychological sense as far as think about how words hurt and, and, and the volume and also your body language because if you're being short, it's like, I, I told you not. Even if you're trying to re restrain yourself, the dog knows. The dog knows that you have to step away from the situation entirely and then come back and do a reset wouldn't you agree Christoph? yeah there's an important thing about that uh, yeah the reset that's a good that's a, a reboot basically you know reboot because the you, you've locked up you know the computer freezes and lots of times you can't do you, you have no choice but to reboot to start even unplug it in the old days unplug it and plug it back in to restart because it's not over mm -hmm. you, you know everything's not over and done with and i'm i've used some examples a little bit there about being in tactical situations where people are trying to kill you or you could possibly die they're screaming and yelling and the dogs got to be forming that not every dog can do that we're talking also you got to make a selection just like the people the humans not every human can handle it some will just get in the fetal position and just be die and same thing with some dogs too some dogs will cannot perform in that situation but the dogs that can can perform in that and i'm saying that i'm not saying that for every pet dog but i'm saying i know i've done this, this is what i've done the type of situations i've been in they're not fun uh you know but different type of person different uh, have a different i have a different personality <laughs> than, than the most of the people you're going to run into at whatever convenience store I, i'm putting it out there but you got to be uh, what we're talking about you got to be aware of the dog and one of the things that we can say just as a way to remember everything you know the dog mirrors the emotional framework of the household or of you so when you're talking about robert's talking about if you're crying all the time or you're depressed all the time the dog's going to mirror this because the dog wants to be with you. I mean, the the, the familial aspect, the affiliation that dogs want. Uh, I don't want to use the word pack because it's not a pack. Everybody uses this and they use it wrongly. But <laughs> the dogs want to, the dogs want to connect with you. The dogs want to be with you. And to do this, they're going to mirror your emotional framework and such. And this is one of the things. I, I, I'm going to throw this out there for a little bit. I'm not going to go in because we're not solving big problems. Again, you know, people, if you want, if you want to, to solve specific problems you know contact us consult with us and that sort of thing but with an angry dog a dog that that again we talked about fearful and it's probably fearful to begin with but the dog is angry you want to change you you can't mirror that anger you gotta you gotta mirror a calm state you gotta slow it we call it in tactical dogs tempo that dog's in high tempo we're going to go to slow tempo so that we can try to bring this dog that's not going to happen right away immediately but through a case of wearing the dog down and just mirroring 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 the, you know vibes you know we'll, and those of us who work with canines and and, and other animals we talk about this weirdness that a lot of people can't understand it's like the vibes but they're because they're there because we're giving off these uh, these emotional these things these whatever wavelengths we're giving off things and the dogs and cats and, and especially exotic and wild animals can pick it up I mean boom because that's how they live they have to be able to do that to know what's going on they know your intentions before you know what's going on uh, and also of course smell which we don't have any clue of and we talk about it it doesn't make any difference to you because you don't you can't learn it so but we're giving off these vibes. So you got to be aware of your emotional state that you're giving off. So if you want, if you want to start working with angry dogs or even scared dogs, you got to, you have to, you have to give them the emotional framework, state of mind that you want them to have. That's one of the things. I just put that. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not going to go into any more detail or anything. But I just want to put it out there because yes, I mean, in, in the end result.
well, everybody can put in the comments below, what do you think? Do you think angry people? I mean, what type of angry person? Have you been angry? H have you been calmed down by coming home and your dog is in a good mood and then suddenly it changes your mood? Or have you come home and made your dog angry? <laughs> or I know people yeah. who come, I know people who come home and get angry at the cat, you know what I mean? But they don't get angry at the dog. And I'm always like, you know, I don't, I'm a cat and dog person. I don't understand this. Oh, you're either a cat or a dog person. I don't understand that whatsoever. Uh, at this point, I don't have cats because they would go psychotic with as many dogs as I have. And not all my dogs like cats. Some of them don't care. My jungle dog doesn't care one way or the other. You know, talking about calm guy, that guy, fire, you know, explosions can go off around that guy. He doesn't care because he's gone through it all. But my, <laughs> my point is that some people have certain responses to certain people, you know, and some people will get angry but they won't it's called this the psychological term is displacement they can't get angry at their boss so they bottle it up and they go home and then they they take it out on the door for example like robert was saying they break the door or they take it out on the dog or you know they take it off on, on, on something that won't give them any flack back as it were instead of confronting the problem the pro problem is with their boss for example but instead they displace it so i just want to make people aware of all this and you know we're the only podcast that goes deep into psychology <laughs> we're doing and saying it all here people so you know anyway i think we've covered a huge amount given a lot of people a lot of things to think about and they can respond to it and play it back again and also by the way people you know uh, if you want to help us out, we need sponsors for the, this show. Uh, I could, we could use new cameras. We could use people who are dedicated editors. Uh, all that because it's it's time consuming and huge, and we need to be out there doing what we do. <laughs> anyway, but Robert, any last words that you want to throw out for this? No, I I I, I think you've seen um, our numbers, so you can reach out to us. If, I mean, if you want to uh, arrange uh, some kind of a Zoom call or some kind of a phone conversation, if you have certain problems that you're facing, you know, a lot of people have faced a lot of things, but they haven't faced everything like Christoph and I have. And um, there's going to always be something that you haven't encountered before and we can set up a an online a conference a meeting individually with Christoph or myself and we can go over those problems and look for solutions things that you haven't been able to solve yourself and everybody's going to run into that there's no shame in not knowing something about dog training I mean I mentioned in my dog training book that that I've made every mistake you could make as a trainer because I've been around long enough to do it the only difference was is I had all these masterful trainers who said hey not like that like this and that's how I learned I learned by making mistakes I learned by talking to people who had more experience than I had even if I'd seen training from one person it, you get a different perspective when you see somebody else doing it and when you see somebody like Christoph or myself somebody who combined together we have a century of experience uh, movie agility you name it we've done it We've, I've done service dog training. Um, I, I'm just saying that the, the versatility you're going to get from the two of us is going to be able to fill in some of the gap that you've been experiencing as a trainer or as an owner who likes to train dogs. Because everybody wants a trained dog. If, if you want a dog, you should want a trained dog. And if you want a trained dog, you should want a dog that's a happy trained dog. So that's why we had this podcast today, so that you're not sharing your bad day with your dog and bringing about uh, you know a different feeling that they've had as they've been waiting for you like Christoph said they're waiting for you all day it seems like even more than a day maybe a week maybe seven days it seems like to a dog because I mean obviously if there's seven years to one year with a dog that means that everything seems longer to a dog and and you being gone you know it may seem like a minute to you it's been an hour to them and we can help you we can help you get in uh, uh, retrospective we'll get you uh, you know perspective on what is the appropriate way to approach dog training and and as you progress through it all the different changes you'll have to make when you're going from one behavior to another um, because that's what we're here for to help you and the only way we can help you is if you give us more support subscribe to our our channel subscribe to our broadcasts and participate get involved ask us questions we want to answer the questions we just need 